Start a scan now of, uh, of this sample. This is just gallium nitride that we're using as a sort of baseline. We'll just be taking a look at the gallium peaks and the nitrogen peaks and the oxygen peaks, uh, just to be sure that uh, we know what this sample is, and then we will go to some more complex samples later. So what the machine is doing right now is called a survey scan or a broad scan, and we're looking basically at the entire spectral width. And that allows us to scan and, and see basically any element in the periodic table. And so we're just using a broad scan here just to, so that we make sure we see every element that is in the sample and how much of it is there. We're seeing some gallium peaks here, some more gallium ogee peaks here. There's an oxygen peak here. We'll be, we'll be zooming in on these later and identifying them. A little bit of carbon on the top, uh, the very topmost surface of the sample, which is typical for something that has been out of the vacuum chamber. And a few more gallium peaks. And there's a nitrogen peak uh, blended into this gallium. What we're going to do now is go in at higher resolution. We'll take a look at these two gallium peaks just to make sure that they are in a single bonding state. We can tell whether the gallium is in one or more bonding states. We'll take a look at this oxygen peak in high resolution and see how much of the oxygen is just sitting on the surface as H2O adsorbed or CO2 as opposed to actually bonded to the gallium. And then this peak here uh, at about 400 EV is actually a combination of the nitrogen 1S photoelectron peak, which is what we're interested in, and a gallium OJ peak, which we're not particularly interested in. We're going to do some high res there so we can pull those two apart and do a fitting routine on it to see how much of the nitrogen is actually bound to the gallium. Okay, so here we are now with the data on the uh, data analysis program. And we're going to look at the information that we got from the spectrometer a little earlier. So what we have here is our survey scan that we took initially. And this was, again, just to show us what elements are there and in what amounts. And what we find is the surface is uh, composed of three elements, gallium, nitrogen, and oxygen. It's gallium nitride. It should only be gallium and nitrogen, but of course anything that's been environmentally exposed is going to have a little bit of oxygen and also a little bit of carbon. And as I said before, uh, there is a, uh, a small carbon peak here. And uh, we just know from experience and also from the fact that there is no uh, loss step associated with that uh, carbon peak, that that is entirely superficial. The carbon that's in the atmosphere is not particularly reactive, and it's not going to interact with the surface, really. Different story for the oxygen, though, of course, because you've got gallium atoms there. That's a metallic atom, uh, and it will have a tendency to react somewhat with the oxygen in the air. So we have to expect that there may be, again, because we're only looking at the very surface with XPS, that there will be a little bit of oxidized gallium in the top monolayers, so we have to be on the lookout for that. So we have gallium, nitrogen, and oxygen, and we, uh, we're modeling this as, uh, this is atomic percentages, so we can think of it as the surface as being modeled as 100 atoms. And in that case, we have 26 gallium atoms, 58 nitrogen atoms, and 15 oxygen atoms. So in other words, we have more than twice as many nitrogens as we do galliums. And on the, on the surface of things, that would seem to be a big problem because it's supposed to be gallium nitride, the formula for which is GAN. In other words, there should be the same amount of uh, gallium and nitrogen atoms. But again, as we said before, this, ga this nitrogen peak, so-called, here, is not all nitrogen. Some of it is uh, uh, gallium OGE peaks that unavoidably uh, become involved with that nitrogen in the low resolution scan. But if we go to a higher resolution scan on the nitrogen, we can see that here's that envelope that just shows up as one big peak in the survey scan. But at high resolution, we can break it down into its components, three of which are gallium OJ peaks, and only one of which is actually nitrogen here at 397 EV binding energy, which is just perfect for uh, nitrogen that's bound to a metal atom, as it is in gallium nitride. And what we see is only 39.5%, or about 40% of this overall envelope, is actually nitrogen. 
So with that understanding now, we can go back to our survey scan and input that number and recalculate the surface concentration with the understanding that this guy is, is only 40% nitrogen. Uh, input that value and recalculating the surface concentration, taking into account that this is not all nitrogen. We now have 40% gallium, 36.5% nitrogen, and 23% oxygen. So we have 40 gallium atoms and 36.5 nitrogen. That's much closer to, to what we expect for gallium nitride. Again, the two numbers should be equal. Um, although, of course, since XPS is so surface sensitive, again, we expect that some of the galliums may be bonded, bonded to oxygen. So, so it's not surprising that the nitrogen is a little bit low. We should always bear in mind that XPS, though it's quantitative or called a quantitative kind of analysis, no analysis is perfect in quantification. And in, in XPS, even in a system in which you have some experience, you don't expect the accuracy to be better than about 10% relative. Uh, and, and that's what we have right here. We have 40 gallium atoms and 36 nitrogens, which is just about exactly a 10% deficit, uh, relatively speaking. So, in principle, a perfect, an atomically perfect surface of gallium nitride could give you those results if you haven't perfectly calibrated your system for this type of gallium nitride. But uh, we expect in the real world uh, that, that there will be some involvement with oxygen. So what we can do now is take a look at the high resolution peak that we did on the uh, oxygen peak, the high resolution scan. And if we go there, what we find <coughs> is an oddly shaped peak, this is the experimental peak, this red one, that doesn't really fit any sort of Gaussian Lorentzian mix that you would expect for a single peak, and it, it can only reasonably be fit as two or more peaks. And when we fit it this way, we find that we have two peaks, one that's out towards 532 EV and is looking more like adsorbed oxygen, although there may be a little bit of hydroxide uh, involvement there. And then this peak down at uh, at uh, 530, which is clearly oxygen that is bound to a metal. Oxygen that's just sitting on the surface as H2O or CO2 would be, would be well out here at, at in the 533, 534 range. And we could have fit this to show a little bit of presence there. And, and when you're doing this, these fitting routines, it's never a guarantee from the outset uh, that you're doing it right on the first go. You have to constantly be going back between your, your high resolution scans and your survey scans. And again, you have to come up with some sort of story, some sort of explanation that makes sense out of all of the high res scans and the, and the low res survey scan all at the same time. All the numbers have to add up. But at any rate, what we see is about a third of our oxygens, or 30%, a little bit less than a third, are actually bonded to metal. And since the only metal in this sample is gallium, they must be bonded to gallium. So when we go back now to our survey, we've got 23 oxygen atoms, about 30% of which are bonded to gallium. That's about seven oxygens. And those seven oxygens are chasing after about three and a half galliums, because remember, we have 40 galliums and 36 and a half nitrogens only. So we're, we've got about three and a half galliums that are uncompensated. The molecular formula for gallium oxide is Ga2O3. So those three and a half galliums should require about five oxygens to be fully compensated as an oxide. And here what we're saying is we've got about seven oxygens that look as though they're bonded to gallium. Uh, so that's a reasonable amount of error given that now we're getting down to these smaller peaks uh, if you look at, for example, at the gallium peak, uh, this is our gallium high resolution peak, and it shows that 90% of it uh, looks as though it's in a, um, in a bonding state with nitrogen, and about 10% is shifted a little bit upfield, up to 1118 EV, that looks more like an oxide. So again, going back to our survey scan, about 10% of 40 is, is four atoms. So and that's, what, and that's what we're missing. That's the deficit that we have in nitrogen. 
So both from the survey and from the oxygen high resolution and the gallium re high resolution and the nitrogen high resolution, uh, it all adds up to a story that tells us that what it looks like we have is a gallium nitride surface uh, with about 10% of the galliums at the surface being bonded to oxygen rather than nitrogen, which is typical for a piece of gallium nitride that has been exposed uh, to the atmosphere.